In this video, we will be taking a tour of our duplex apartment building. And each one of the duplexes will have the same building layout, along with a solid or monolithic foundation that will connect together. Now I have 12 inch by 12 inch wide footings going around. I have a five inch thick floor slab. And even though the center footing is a little larger, I don't really know if it would need to be larger. And of course, the garage slab is going to be separate from the foundation along with the porch slab. And we will have a one inch step down. Both the porch and the garage slab will slope a minimum of an eighth of an inch, probably a quarter of an inch per foot is going to be better. And the reason why you might not need a quarter of an inch per foot slope is because both of these areas are going to be covered by a roof. However, I don't think you would want to make it level. And there will be a two inch gap between the two walls here. However, sometimes it's a good idea to connect the top plates together in the front and the back to get a little more structural strength for the building. And of course, I would be guilty of doing this more than once. However, I would not do it if it was on the plans. Make no mistake about that. And like I said, this side right here is identical to this side here, where we are going to have a bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, closet, closet, entry closet, entryway, porch, living room, kitchen, washer and dryer area, pantry, and then garage. Next up, let's go ahead and split the building in half since they are going to be identical. And we will start with the garage window. And I'm going to go ahead and go through this a little faster than normal. Because in the second half of the video, I'm going to take each wall and provide you with a separate view of it. So let's go ahead and go through it here. And of course, we are going to have a long wall here. We might need some additional bracing across this point here. And I will provide a little more information about that in a future video. Back room there, living room, bedroom. And I did make these windows a little longer. I think in the original plans, I have them at three foot. I went ahead and changed them to 42 inches or three foot six inches. And of course, these two windows are a little wider because they're going to be fire egresses, emergency fire escapes. You're not going to want to go through this part of the house if it's on fire. If it's on fire, you're going to want to jump out one of the windows. And of course, our bathroom window there. Front bedroom with a front window here and the door coming into the bedroom. Our porch beam here, this beam is going to be supported by two two by fours on each side. This beam is going to sit into the channel here a little bit and we will have two two by fours in there. You'll get a better view of that later. And we do have a long wall here providing a nice structural tie. And of course, this wall right here is going to be a little longer. And we can basically do the same with these two walls here. Just kind of run a strap across the top and then block the ceiling joist so that we can get a nice continuous tie through here. And of course, we can do the same thing here. We can bring something off of here if we need a little more support for those walls. And coming out of the kitchen here, we're going to go into the laundry area, washer and a dryer over here, and door to the garage, and then a door to the pantry and let's go ahead and take a look at this area from the garage view and then head over to the bedroom. So here we have our larger window and I believe the building code is we need a minimum of a 20 inch tall by 20 inch wide access hole to climb out of. Front window here a little smaller and of course our closet. So here's the bedroom closet and the entryway closet. And don't forget to check out how all of the top plates connect along with all of the framing breaks, all of the upper plate breaks, along with how I laid out all of the lower framing plates. And if anybody finds a mistake in the video, feel free to share it with us in the comment area. And of course, you can go back and read these comments later if you're interested in building something like this or if you're just interested in learning a little more about home building. And our bathroom window is going to be a little taller 
and usually doesn't require an emergency exit route but you would need to check with your local building department to verify that information and we do have some blocks here for a medicine cabinet and even though i didn't install other mid-span blocks throughout the rest of the house it's not a bad idea to put them next to the door at least one or two of them to stabilize the door trimmers however the drywall will also help to stabilize the door trimmers the entryway to the bedroom there along with the closet the closet here is going to be a little larger than the front bedroom and again we're going to have a smaller window over here larger window over here and keep in mind that you can center the window in the room i just moved it over here to provide you with another building design idea and of course our door leading out to the backyard and this is it for the first half of the video. In the second half of the video, I'm going to go over each wall individually, and I will be kind of showing you either the building foundation or certain sections of the house to keep your orientation. So let's go ahead and start with the garage door wall that is going to have double trimmers. And here we have a 4x10 header along with two by four wall framing studs. And keep in mind that I will not be able to provide you with specific lumber sizes for building this house in your area. Next up, let's go to the side wall here. And of course, this is going to be the longest wall in the house. And if you're going to drywall the garage, you're going to need to install backing for the drywall, along with channels and ears these are often referred to as ears and the top plate from the intersecting wall will also go over this wall and fasten to it so whenever you see something like this is where it's going to be lapping over the wall and we often refer to this as an ear and do not ask me why but we did another view of it there and again like I said your brakes are going to be four foot apart and this isn't going to apply in every area and how do I know that because I made a video suggesting that we need a little more nails in our top plates to connect them together where I'm at we need 12 16 D nails on each side of the brake but in some places I don't think it's even specified let's go back to the front of the house so that we can go to the back of the house and then take a look at this wall where we're going to have either a sliding glass door or French doors and then a bedroom window along with two intersecting walls. So let's go ahead and zoom in on one side here. And by now you should be getting a pretty good idea how the framing plates, the upper framing plates connect together along with the backing that would be required for the intersecting walls. And of course our double trimmers again. It's often a standard rule of thumb to have two trimmers on an opening that is five foot or larger. Next up we have our bedroom windows, one on each side with our bathroom window. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it here. And you can probably remove one of the studs here because you can see that this is not a 16 inch bay here. You can start from here and go 16 inches on center this way or start from here and go 16 inches on center to get rid of this stud here and simply move the brake over to here or even right here. Again, four foot minimum, however that's going to work out for you. And keep in mind that your measurements for your windows might change. That's the reason why I'm not including any measurements for anything in this example. And believe it or not, I was actually going to include all the measurements until I realized that that was going to be a problem. So our bedroom window, front of the house, the entryway to the porch, we have a beam here that's going to be supporting the roof trusses or roof rafters. And of course, our garage door, the entry from the garage into the house. And let's go ahead and take a look at the other side here so that I can give you an idea of what the backing is going to look like. We're going to have a flat 2x4. And this 2x4 will only need to be on the side where it connects to the other wall. And then let's go ahead and pan out here. These trimmers here are going to sit on the other framing plate. And I did that so that we could run the other framing plate through. And of course, that would be this area right here. 
or this area right here where we don't have any 2x4s because we're going to be installing two of them to support the porch beam. And you can always move your windows over if you're looking to save a few studs. And again, this is a good example of our framing brakes. We have a four foot minimum here, and then we're going over. We have a long two by four that's going to connect these two walls together. And this is a common practice when you're dealing with two intersecting walls. And if I'm going to have two walls on each side, I can install flat backing for the walls, or I can go ahead and install two by fours like this, or even install some blocks if I want to save a few dollars. So again, we can see where this one is running through. This one's going to butt into it, and then we're going to have our porch over here. And when I'm using the 3D modeling, I can fix a lot of this stuff. However, that might not be the case when you're working on the project and trying to figure out what it's going to look like when you can't see it yet. Now that we've taken care of the outside, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. This wall here isn't too exciting. Let's go ahead and add the other wall. And of course our laundry area, kitchen pantry, and then the front door going out to the porch. Let's go ahead and remove the other wall, zoom in on it here. And again, we have a wall going through here with the top plate connecting these two walls together. And of course, the other side of the wall here, door going into the pantry, along with our channel and our ear. Let's go ahead and go to the other side where we're going to see the flat backing for the wall that will separate the pantry from the washer and dryer room. And of course, the entry closet door here and then the opening going into the bedrooms and bathroom. And I believe all of the door sizes are laid out on the floor plan. Feel free to check that out. I will be putting together a playlist for this video series. And if you have any questions or suggestions, something you might want to see or something you need a little more information on, feel free to leave that in the comment area. So we're simply putting together certain sections of the house and taking them apart so that we can get a better view of the individual walls. And even though you might be disoriented right now, don't worry, I'm going to go ahead and throw the foundation in here. And for those of you who are lost, we have a closet here, bedroom over here. Here's our porch, and this is the entry to the house. So this is the front of the house. Next up, let's go ahead and install the door that will separate the bathroom from the bedroom. And of course, this will be the entry door into the bedroom. And this wall will have a channel on one side and a channel on the other side. And I don't know if we have any more walls in the house like that. And let's not forget, you might need some towel bar backing in this wall here. Just don't forget that you're not going to need it behind the door most of the time. I say that but I usually stop my backing for the towel bar so that the door won't hit it. And all you need to do is simply measure this distance here, measure it over here, and that would be the distance roughly that the door would open after it's hung. However, I have seen plenty of towel bars behind doors and hooked onto the doors. And then, of course, a view of the doorway going into the bathroom along with our medicine cabinet. And for those of you wondering why the block is low, that's because we're trying to prevent the electrician from knocking this block out because we put it right where the electrical box is going to go for the light switch. Another thing you need to pay attention to when installing blocks around doors and the bathroom wall dividing the back bedroom with the bathroom. And I went ahead and centered a bay in here to provide plenty of room for our bathtub and shower fixture. And even though I didn't put any blocks here, I went ahead and marked out for them. If you are going to be installing a pre-made unit, then make sure that you have all of the blocking necessary to follow the installation instructions for that pre-manufactured bathtub. So again, we're reorienting ourselves for those of you who have got lost and trying to figure out where we are. And this is the back bedroom closet, back side of the closet. And this is the last wall we need to take a look at in our tour. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. And again, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area or comments about this building.